So in this video, we'll continue our topic on solving a linear system by the Gaussian elimination. And last video, we have briefly introduced the method for a simple system of two equations and two unknowns. And let's try to see how you can deal with that. If I'm giving you a bigger system, let's say now this time I'm giving you a three equation and three unknown system. And we expect that if you transfer all the data into a matrix form, you're getting a matrix form something like that. Now the key goal is that you have to use some row operations uh, to get to the form where you'll see something like you actually have already eliminated the non-zero numbers in the bottom left corner. But now the bottom left corner contains three spots. So I'm talking about the fact that if you think of um, this one as a three by three system, the fact is we can look at the diagonal, this one people call it diagonal, and all the numbers below the diagonal from the top left to the bottom right, um, should be made zero by some row operations. If you're able to do that, if you're able to do that. So um, it's gonna be very beneficial for us to solve the system. Can you see why um, if the linear system is written in this form where the bottom left three spots are gonna be zero, uh, it's very beneficial for us to solve the system. Can you see why? And let me give you a simple example now. So please look at the current system in the matrix form. Now you actually have uh, three lines which represent three equations. And you actually have three columns on the left hand side which represent the fact that you're solving the system with three unknowns, let's call them X, Y, Z. And now you see the current matrix form actually um, meets our demand, which is the fact that the bottom left corners, the three of them, all are zeros. Let's say you are successfully transforming the original matrix form into this form. Can you see why you can solve this one easily? Because when you write it down in a linear system, I think now uh, it's actually quite clear. For example, I try to write it like this. You see, that's the system you have. And the solution to the last variable is done. And what you can do is a process called backward substitution. For example, in the second equation here, you can replace the last value of Z, which is three here, so we can solve for the y. y is actually 5 minus 9, which is minus 4 now, right? And you see the fact is you have y, you have z. You see, you have these two. And backward substitution means you can finally go back to the equation 1 and you can solve for the x. And let me do the calculation now. So now it becomes x plus 3 times y. y is minus 4, right? And the z is actually 3. So you're actually having an equation like this. So we can easily solve this. And the fact is that x is actually 11. So it means what? So it means uh, if you're having this system, you see, to solve for all the solutions, uh, it's actually a very quick process because you can just simply do a backward substitution to get all the answers. Like the current system, you're having exactly one solution. So it means the system is actually consistent because you have uh, at least one solution. And in this case, we actually have exactly one set of solutions. And uh, now, the fact is for you to learn how you can transform any system to a form like this, which means that uh, all the spots below the diagonal should be zero. So uh, let's try to do an example now. Please look at the given system here. Um, you have three unknowns because of the fact that you actually have three columns on the left hand side and three equations, row one, row two, and row, row three. So um, now, uh, as I said, you have to try to make all the three spots here zero by some row operations. And uh, we can look at the process here. The procedure is that um, we should first make the numbers on the first column be zero. And let's start with the row two. So uh, we try to make it zero. And um, I think the correct row operation by using row one is we can actually do row minus two times row one. And let me write down the system now after doing this step. You see, because I'm doing operations only on the row two, and row one and row three now remains unchanged. And let me write down the new numbers on the row two now. You see the first number must be zero because of the fact that you're doing something minus two times something. This one is from row two, which is two. This one is from row one, which is one. Of course it is zero, right? And how about the next spot? It's gonna be uh, row two, which is one now, you see, minus two times row one, which is two. 
and this one is 1 minus 4 which is minus 3 and the last spot in the row 2 on the left hand side is going to be minus 2 minus times row 1 which is 3 here you see so I've been doing that so it's going to be minus 2 minus 6 it is going to be minus 8 and the last one on the right hand side you have to do the same it is minus 2 times 2 minus 2 times 14 so it's going to be minus 2 minus 28 which is minus 30 right so I'm just going to put it here like this now you see the first step is successful we have already made this number 0 so we have to keep going we have to try to make it 0 now the fact is what the fact is that to make this last spot on the first column 0 we cannot use the row 2 anymore because this one is 0 you cannot change this number by using the row 2 because um, this spot is already 0 right so we can only use the row 1 and I think of course um, the obvious one is I can use row 3 which is minus 1 plus row 1 I'm using plus row 1 because you see minus 1 plus 1 is going to be 0 right and there's a reason why I'm doing that because of the fact that I'm just changing the row 3 the first two rows can be made unchanged and the last spot now is 0 because I'm doing minus 1, which is row 3 plus row 1, right? And plus 1, which is 0. And the second spot here is going to be 4, which is from row 3 plus row 1, which is 2. It's going to be 6. And the last spot on the left-hand side of the last row is going to be 2 plus 3, right? 2 plus 3, which is 5. And how about the last number? It's going to be row 3 plus row 1, which is 4, 13 plus 14 is going to be 27 right and uh, that's what we have after doing two times of the row operation and we have successfully made two zeros already and the last one is to make this spot zero can you see how you can that you see the fact is that to make this number six zero um it looks like we are free to use either row one or row two right however you can only use R2 at this stage because of the fact that we don't want to make this spot non-zero again. If you try to make this 6 zero by using the row 1, it's not a good idea at all because in that case, you see, because row 1 has a 1 here, which is non-zero, right? If you use the row operation by the row 1, it's going to change this number from zero to non-zero. It's not something we want. You want to keep these two fixed at zero. So it means to make six zero, we have to allow ourselves to only use the row two. Can you see how you can make it uh, zero? This is row three, this is row two, which is minus three. You have to use some row operations to make it zero. I think the best one to use is plus two, right? So uh, because if you do it this way, 6 minus 6 is going to be 0. So it looks like we have to use row 3 plus 2 times row 2 for the final line here. So of course, in this case, it basically means the first two lines are kept unchanged. And for the last line, you see the first spot here, is it must be 0 because um, you are doing something like 0 plus 2 times 0, right, for the first spot, which is 0. So the second spot is what we have done here, which is 6 plus 2 times minus 3, which is 0, of course. And uh, we basically finish this process of making the last three spots here 0, right? And we have to be careful here. This one basically means row 3, which is 5, plus times minus 8. And it's going to be 5 minus 16, which is minus 11, right? And how about the last spot? The last spot is going to be 27 plus 2 times row 2, which is minus 30. So um, I think it's going to be 27 minus 60, which is minus 33, right? So you see, um, at this stage, we have finished our process. And let's do the computation of x, y, z uh, by transferring all the data back to a system. So please take a look at this system now. And I assume that you're able to solve for z, y, and x by a backward solution. So you see, backward substitution means from the last line, we actually understand that z is actually 3 right and from the second equation we can make use of what we have for the z which is 3 to solve for the second equation so it's going to be minus 3 no, minus 3y minus 24 equals minus 30 so minus 3y is going to be minus 6 so i think y is actually 2 and the last equation which is actually the equation 1 is going to be x plus 2 
one y is actually two now plus three and we know z is actually three right so we are having an equation like this and x is actually 14 minus 4 and minus 9 and x is actually 1 so it means what so we are now having a system of um, answers x equals 1 y equals 2 and z equals 3 as our answer to this system so the system is consistent in the sense that we have exactly one set of solutions for x y z that's the end of this video